North Star Self-Directed Learning for Teens, 10th Annual Self-Directed Learning Award presented to Princeton Learning Cooperative for exemplifying the idea that learning is natural and school is optional. Well, good morning. Uh, what a privilege it is to be the first follower of the North Star loan nut, right? Like, North Star had this sort of starting a movement thing all figured out way before that video came out. Um, you know, they have uh, been invested in our success and have embraced us as an equal from the very beginning. Um, and I bet if we can raise, you know, maybe like $30,000 today or something, we could probably convince Ken and everybody, everyone else at North Star to do the crazy shirtless guy dance. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps film it for future reference. Like, I know I'd be willing to pay to see that happen. I don't know. Uh, so I'm happy to accept this award on behalf of everyone uh, at the Princeton Learning Cooperative who worked incredibly hard over the last five years um, to make PLC a reality. Um, Co-founder and co-director Paul Scott, who couldn't be here today. Uh, staff members, uh, Allison Snikis and Justin Lanier, who are here. All of our members who, who traveled up with us, parents, volunteers. And as you guys know, it takes a tremendous number of people uh, to make a place like North Star or PLC work. Um, and so this award is, is really for everyone. Uh, and you know, everyone at PLC has their own stories about how they got involved. And, and they don't all include North Star. Um, my story, however, is intimately tied uh, to North Star. And I'd like you to tell you about it. Uh, it's, it's ultimately a really happy story, you know, like I'm really excited to get up and do what I do every day. Uh, it didn't start out that way. Um, you know, I, I come from a family of teachers. Uh, my wife is a teacher. My dad was a teacher. My mother-in-law is a teacher. I have aunts who are teachers. Most of my friends are teachers. My mom was a secretary at the school. Um, you know, and so I went into teaching with a lot of idealism around, you know, I'm going to change the world. I'm going to change kids' lives. Uh, and, and what I found out from my teaching career uh, is that I loved working with young people, but I really and truly hated my job. Right? I was a social studies teacher, teacher and I was miserable. You know? um, and I don't want to be like, overly dramatic here, right? uh, but eventually I, I basically felt like a prison guard. Right? I was making kids who didn't want to be there do things they didn't want to do. Right? And, and I don't know how many of you teachers in here, that is not a pleasant way to go through life. Right? And certainly not why I wanted to go into teaching in the first place. Right? I wanted to help kids get better at the things that they loved. Uh, so just like many of the PLC members, North Star members, who felt stuck in school, you know, I was stuck too. Right? Um, and, and I knew I had to get out. Small problem though. If you're a teacher and you don't like school, <laughs> what do you do? Right? <laughs> like, um, <clears throat> So, you know, I was pretty desperate. Uh, you know, I was Googling things at night, like, you know, jobs for teachers who hate teaching. <laughs> things like that. You, know, you should try it. It's actually, you'd be amazed at what you find. Um, uh, and at this time, I was, I was rereading a book I had read after graduating from college called The Teenage Liberation Handbook. And I was reading it, you know, I came across like a little tiny, Ken, I don't know how big it is, like two sentence kind of mention of this place called Pathfinder. I remember going, huh, that's interesting. Yeah, I should track them down. So I did. And I, and I found out that, that you know, Pathfinder changed its name to North Star and eventually found their website. And I can still remember this night vividly. Right? I was sitting in my office upstairs, 11 o'clock at night, just dreading going to work the next day. Um, and I, finally, you know, I was reading North Star's website. Um, and as I really started to understand what they were doing um, and the way they were working with kids, I literally jumped out of my chair and I did like an Irish jig kind of around my office. Like, it, was, it wasn't quite like the shirtless dance, but it was in my own horribly dancing way it was. Um, and because that, you know, like that was it. Like this is, this is what I want to do. This was my vision for why I wanted to go into to education. Um, and this was it, right? I found exactly what I was looking for. Uh, and so, you know, I remember sending some just crazy email to Ken the next morning. like. Hi, Ken. I'm a teacher outside of Philadelphia. I hate teaching. Help me. You know, and to his eternal credit, uh, he responded nicely and encouragingly, right? You know, um, and so lucky for me, North Star was holding their first ever replication conference that summer. And so my wife and I came up over spring break. Uh, and I remember meeting with, with Catherine and Ken and Susanna 
uh, and everyone there. Um, and then I came up for the replication conference that summer, and it was great. You know, I was convinced. Like, this is, this is what I wanted to do with my life. Um, small problem, <laughs> again. Uh, you can't just, like, and some of the other replicators here, you can't just start something like this, right? Um, and so I ended up teaching another four years after that first, you know, like, hey, this is what I want to do. It took that long to build it. Um, and so it really, um, and it didn't get any better, you know, like those four years weren't like joyous years, right? Um, and so what really kept me sane and gave me hope during that whole period was North Star um, and just the beautiful example that they had given the world. Um, whenever I had time at school, I would be on North Star's website just endlessly reading and rereading everything on there. Um, I would show the North Star documentary to my seventh grade classes and then discuss it with them. How many people would like to just stop going to school? <laughs> Me, I would, you know, like, it's unbelievable I didn't get fired. Like, I don't know. <laughs> just must not have been paying attention or something. The administration, anyway. Um, and, you know, I'd like to particularly mention Catherine's blog. Um, I don't know how many of you have a chance to read that, but during those worst times uh, of teaching, you know, I could go on there and read her writings. And I didn't know her personally, really, during that, that period. Um, but, uh, you know, I could read what she was writing and just sort of kept a glimmer of hope alive. Um, and so I am eternally thankful to you and your, your writings. Um, and so through some mutual friends, uh, I was able to connect with Paul Scott in the winter of 2009. Uh, he was a disgruntled math teacher at one of the private schools um, near where we live. And we just sat down and discussed education. You know, what could we do? Um, for students who, we didn't, who didn't fit the mold of public and private schools. Um, and we pulled together a large group of community members, like former students, parents, friends, basically anyone who would show up. Um, and we just discussed, you know, what, what could we do? What kind of structures could we create to support teens? Uh, and so we eventually settled on the North Star model as, as the way forward and just got busy doing the work, right? Um, and so Paul was fed up with his teaching job, so he left and was suddenly available to be the staff member at what would become the Princeton Learning Cooperative, uh, in the fall of 2010. I would serve as the president of the board. Um, and so we started. And it, was, it was Paul and five kids in the Arts Council building in Princeton, one room, just a little tiny whatever. Uh, and it was great, right? Uh, they would go on hikes whenever the sort of mood struck them. They would, you know, um, program computers. Volunteers would come through and discuss philosophy. They would you know, uh, build robots, you know, what, whatever. It was, and it was wonderful. And, and so even at this very small scale, right at the beginning, you know, we saw the value and the power of, of the North Star model at work in, in you know, improving teens' lives right there. Um, one of our founding members who was with us on day one, still with us today, uh, left school before what would have been his eighth grade year. Um, he had a, a deep interest in electronics and you know, computers and things like that. And his middle school offered 45 minutes of you know, computer time each week. Right? And so his life was just filled up with worksheets and homework that he thought, found meaningless and just things totally irrelevant to, to his life. Um, and, you know, and then all the, the stress and the fighting about getting homework done and all, it took a toll on everybody. And so he left. Right? Um, and he had the time and the support to truly go after what it was that he was interested in, you know, his real talents in life. Uh, and I, I'm happy to report that he's you know, made good use of his time, right? Um, he has an internship helping uh, solder electrical components for a uh, tech startup in Princeton. Um, and he just got a job, a part-time job, at the Princeton Plasma Physics Lab. Um, <clears throat> now, I, you know, I don't know what he would be doing if he stayed in school. But I guarantee you he would be, not be working at one of the foremost physics research centers in the United States. Now, I'm not saying he's doing the research, right? But he gets to hang out with the people who are doing the research. I mean, how cool is that, right? Like, it's wonderful. And so on that strength of that um, pilot program, I was finally able to quit my job, uh, and I joined the staff the following year. Allison also uh, joined full-time uh, during that year. And so we had, like, a bit of an explosion of membership, and we, we had to move to a new space because we outgrew our first space. How exciting was that? Um, and so the, the sort of the progress has been uh, you know, starting from a very small thing uh, to an increase in sustainability and membership and finances, um, and things have just been going really well. We had a party last month, um, sort of celebrating for the, fa you know, the fact that PLC is sort of at capacity 
for the first time in our history, right? Um, and so, you know, just with, along with just having a great time enjoying what we do on a daily basis, PLC is truly improving the lives that we work with, uh, the people that we work with. And at that party in March, one of our members had the brilliant, actually KC sitting over here, had the brilliant idea to like leave note cards on the table uh, and have people write down like little memories or what PLC means to them. Uh, and I want to share with you one of those, those cards. Um, one of the parents wrote, having experienced the ever-tightening box of traditional school, our daughter's life was saved by the safety valve offered by PLC. The pressure had been suffocating, now she breathes, breathes free. You know, my goodness, like that's as good as gold, right? Um, it's just beautiful. And, and it probably goes without mentioning that this type of work is incredibly satisfying, you know, m much more than what, what I experienced in school. Um, and so PLC is becoming known in the community. We, um, when we first started, a lot of our members were coming because they really didn't feel like they had any other options. Um, but now we have families that are looking at all the possibilities uh, for education in Princeton, of which there are many, as you can probably imagine, and are choosing PLC as their first choice. Right? And so for the, the future of PLC and North Star, the North Star model looks really bright. You know, we're actually in the process of opening an additional center uh, in a place called Newtown, Pennsylvania. So we'll actually have two centers um, you know, operating together. Um, and so on the larger scale, like Ken mentioned, you know, there's this new organization that staff members from North Star and PLC created uh, called